Hello there friends and welcome! For today's Pathfinder video we have a very special build, an Alchemist Incense Synthesizer Azata. With this amazing Alchemist archetype you'll be able to provide your party not only with very rare alchemical bonuses to attack and damage rolls and even debuff all enemies including demons and even undead with a very powerful Incense Fog aura that can both nauseate and sicken foes as to shut them down out of any actions and easily debuff their saves and attack rolls. Besides that, as an alchemist, you'll still be able to provide a lot of powerful self-only buffs to your whole party through the infusion discovery and still have some pretty powerful and nasty debuff bombs like force for knockdown, curse and even dispelling bombs to easily take on any foe. Besides that, because of all of your buffs, this build will also be very versatile. You'll have pretty nice melee capabilities with very high damage, great armor class, without spending anything in any defensive feat, and this is without stacking mutagens by the way, which you can do as an Azata alchemist, very high saving throws, and even quite a lot of stacked skills too, from our high intelligence. Not to mention of course close to 500 hit points, with very high physical scores overall, and incredible intelligence. Lastly, we'll be going with Azata, which grants you not only Ivo the Friendly Dragon Pet and extremely powerful mythic buffs to highly empower your whole party, some of which capable of very rare bonuses that only Azata has at their disposal, both to ability scores and difficulty class. And to top of it all, you'll be able to restore all of your alchemist bomb uses and also all of the abilities uses from all of your party members. It's a very stacked build capable of pretty much everything and while it won't have as high damage as some of my other ones, the very special and unique buffs and debuffs certainly make up for that. So without further ado, let us get started on our Incense Synthesizer build. Well, I don't think it needs any saying, but <laughs> the key to the build is of course Alchemist and then Incense Synthesizer. I do believe this is actually a unique archetype added by all cats to the game, it's not really from the Pathfinder tabletop. And your main feature is the Incense Fog ability. By default, this works on a 50-foot area around your Alchemist, very similar to the way Bard and Scald songs work. It is centered on your character, and so long as you turn it on, a new use will be drained every 6 seconds. And initially, it will only add a plus 1 alchemical bonus to attack and weapon damage rolls, which does matter because, you know, the bonus is super unique, alchemical, so this will stack with everything else. Thankfully, every 3 levels, we can also add new abilities to our Incense Fog, including better buffing and debuffing. The best overall are increased range, so you can truly hit all party members and enemies at the same time, improved incense for higher alchemical bonuses to AB and damage, but most importantly sacred incense and greater sacred incense, which are our main crowd control abilities. So sacred incense will force a fortitude save, otherwise the enemies will become alchemically sickened. This is a special version of Seeken, which does bypass some immunities and results in a minus 2 to the enemy's attack rolls and saving throws. Also, it will stack with the normal Seeken effect, such as for example from the Crusader's Edge buff that sickens demons on a critical hit without a save. And when combined, we get minus 4 to saves and attack rolls. The greater version upgrade of course is way better because it automatically sickens the enemies without a save and most importantly also attempts to alchemically nauseate them. If you've played Kingmaker before, then you know Stinking Clown was a super OP spell there because it had the potential to easily nauseate enemies, and nauseated enemies cannot do anything besides move. They cannot attack or cast spells at all. The highest bomb and incense fog DC I was able to get is 45, which you know is not extreme, but it's enough. For example, this is an unfair and you just have to move towards the enemies and notice how basically everyone besides the Gallo Stormcaller were already hit with Incense Fog so they are now both sickened and nauseated or in this other example everyone failed the save besides the Merilith including the Baylor Ravager all of these are powerful late game mythic demons Incense Synthesizers still get all of the Alchemist spells and they even have bombs and all of the bomb support abilities, including discoveries too. Lastly, you also lose the first mutagen, but amusingly enough, 
Starting from level 12, you can still acquire the greater mutagen and later grand and even true mutagens. The only thing you'll truly be missing is the cognatogen ability, which you know is kinda sad because we could use the higher difficulty class from more intelligence, but we can make do without it. So let's get started on our alchemist synthesizer progression. When it comes to race, you know as usual I really like humans, for the versatility and the extra fit at level 1, but for this build in particular you aren't really fit starved, so you can go with anything else you want. The background is simple, you absolutely want pickpocket, for the bonus to initiative. The faster we can act in battle, the sooner we can start debuffing the enemies. For ability points, intelligence is a must, because this will increase not only our incense fog difficulty class, but also the DC of your bombs. And later we also get a nice weapon that scales based on intelligence for both attack bonus and damage rolls, the Death's Consonant Bardish, which I also use in my Lich King build. For constitution you can leave it at either 12 or 14. This character will have either reach when it comes to melee attacks, or in the case of bombs and your fog they are ranged abilities of sorts, so you'll always be able to attack from safety behind your tanks and other allies. For dexterity, 14 is more than enough. Our bombs will hit the enemy's touch armor class, which is way lower than their normal armor class, and as far as melee attacks, as I said, we have intelligence. Now I do recommend, however, that you start with around 12 strength, because our main intelligence weapon only comes at chapter 3 onwards. As for the rest, you can put them into constitution. Wisdom and Charisma are basically dump stats, although you need some Charisma for the Azata spells, so I would leave it at the very least at 10. The rest you can get through headbands. When it comes to skill points, as a high intelligence build we have a lot to spare. I would focus on Arcana, World, Nature, Use Magic Device and Perception. The last can go into the Trickery or Stealth if you prefer. As far as your level 1 feats, well, as any build that has access to bombs, you certainly want Point Blank Shot, and also precise shot as early as level 1. As I said before, our bombs are ranged touch attacks, and without precise shot, we'll take a very annoying minus 4 penalty to their attack rolls. However, this will not be a ranged weapon build, so this is just for our actual bombs. Because of the way your incense fog ability works, so it is centered on your character, it is best if you go for melee weapons, reach weapons as I said of course, so you can be somewhat close not only to your allies but also the enemies to properly buff and debuff them respectively. As far as spells, I already have a guide of the best arcane spells that you can check, link to the site here or in the video description, but for alchemists, usually the buffs are always the best, especially the self-personal only buffs, because you'll soon be able to actually apply them to even allies, which is one of the most appealing features of alchemist. And I'll guide you along the best personal only buffs that you can pick here. Don't forget that alchemists can learn spells just like wizards by also scribing scrolls, so you aren't limited to just what you pick here. But anyways, for the first spells, well we have a lot, basically almost everything. For deity, since we are going with Azata, any deity that allows the Azata alignments, usually ones like Caden and Desna, and I would personally choose Chaotic Good. For level 2, you'll get your first discovery, and you absolutely want infusion. This is the one that lets you cast personal only spells even on your allies. And there are some very powerful spells that you can use with this that I will soon show you. Just for some examples that you already get at this level, the shield spell, especially for pets and melee characters that don't have shields, and alchemists can even cast true strike on other characters for a very powerful first initial hit. For our level 3 feat, this is when I would pick martial weapons proficiency. The reason is simple, as I said before, your incense fog ability works as an aura surrounding your character. If your synthesizer is far away from your party members and the enemies, well you won't be able to properly buff and debuff as many as you can. Plus this will let us use the super powerful Death's Consonant Bardish later on. As for your first incense upgrade, while it somehow pains me to pick this because it doesn't really grant you any new ability, increased range I think is the best choice early on. Like I said, you want to truly maximize the amount of allies, but most importantly enemies, you can buff and debuff with your incense fog ability, and with this and a rich weapon you'll truly be able to hit everyone at once. If you don't care for this and are fine with having to constantly move your alchemist close to the enemies, you can ignore it and get started on the other feats, which will be sacred incense and later improved incense. At level 4, increase intelligence, which is also what you should increase on all the other levels, to truly maximize our DC. For your level 4 discovery, I'd go with Precise Bomb, if only because otherwise your bomb splash damage will hit your allies as well, 
which I find pretty annoying. Although you can potentially ignore this if you want, because you know, bomb damage by default is fire. You can just cast resist fire communal on your allies to avoid the splash hits. But later on, you'll be getting force bombs, which does force damage, and there's really no resistance against that. For your first level 2 spells, there's two great picks here. Animal Aspect is amazing if you have tripping pets or characters with trip. If you have a dog and wolf, choose the Aspect of Gorilla, as this will give a plus 4 competence bonus to their trip attempts, quite a hefty boost that will ensure they easily trip most enemies. Otherwise, False Life is also great for granting temporary hit points to all your allies. The same with the Blur spell for 20% concealment, but other spellcasters can cast Blur. For Animal Aspect and False Life, you truly need an Alchemist. At level 5, I would pick Ability Focus and Bombs. This is basically the only way to increase our Bomb and Incense Fog debuff DC, outside of increasing intelligence and higher class levels. For another level 2 spell, False Life, remember that I said Alchemist can scribe scrolls just like Wizard, so you can easily learn all of these spells at the same time. For our level 6 discovery, you basically have two choices, Choking Bomb and the Spelling Bombs. So Choking Bomb can actually nauseate the enemies that are hit with this, and even the ones in the splash damage area, so quite a powerful crowd control ability that can hit multiple enemies at once. However, demon enemies in Wrath of the Righteous are actually immune to the normal nauseated effect, so it's kinda useless against them. But, at this point in the game you're still at around chapter 1 and chapter 2, and you do fight a lot of cultist enemies that aren't immune to poison or nauseated, so you can at least use this for them. If you don't care and you want something that will also work on demons, go with the spelling bombs instead, which can actually dispel multiple effects per bomb strike. You'll never hit very high caster level with this, level 20 will be the max, but you can still dispel a lot of enemies. You'll soon get multiple bombs per round, and each bomb dispels multiple effects. For your second Incense Fog upgrade, Sacred Incense without a doubt, so we can finally get started on debuffing the enemies. And if you didn't care for increased range, you can of course get Sacred Incense as early as level 3 instead. For another level 2 spell, I'd go with Blur, but there as you know, Bark Skin, Aid, it's just that other casters like Darren, Sociel can easily cast this ones. For your level 7 feat, I would personally pick Outflank, because as I said, we'll be using reach weapons even early, like Glaives and Bardishes, and Outflank can help you a lot when it comes to contributing to party damage to more attacks of opportunity. If, however, you absolutely don't care for melee attacks at all, then you can basically get started on to attacking more bomb uses through extra bomb. You can actually pick extra bombs multiple times. Each time you pick it, it adds plus 4 to your bomb uses. I just don't find it that necessary because as an Azata alchemist, we have a spell to recover our bomb uses multiple times even. And I do enjoy having a bigger melee focus because ultimately, you don't have to throw your bombs at every trash mob in the game. Ideally, you would save them for the tougher enemies. For the trash mobs, you can melee just fine, especially when empowered by your incense fog buffs and debuffs, which work based on an aura, so you still retain melee. So my preferred pick here would be Outflank. Then your first level 3 spell is a given haste. There's nothing really better than it. For your level 8 bomb discovery, this one is a given fast bombs. So through fast bombs, we can actually throw multiple bombs per round, equal to our number of attacks, which is based on your base attack bonus. And at level 8, it's exactly when alchemists get 2 attacks per round, so we can already throw 2 bombs. Then I would go with Displacement. Spells like Delay Poison Communal, Resist Energy Communal, I'd much rather leave them to other casters like Clerics, Wizards and so on. For our level 9 feat, this one is also a given Rapid Shot. Yes, it is true that we are not using ranged weapons, however, this does have very nice synergy with the Fast Bombs ability, so you can get even another bomb attack per round. Then for your incense upgrade, improve it incense. So now we have plus two alchemical to attack rolls and damage for our entire party. Your other level three spell can be whatever. I suppose protection from arrows communal because divine casters don't really have access to this. For your level 10 bomb, force bombs is by far the best. So force bombs not only do force damage instead of fire, which is the default bomb, and force damage is basically irresistible. The most important part, however, is that it will attempt to knock down the enemy directly hit with the bomb based on a reflex saving throw. Knockdown is one of the most powerful debuffs, and since we throw multiple bombs per round, chances are the enemy is going to fail the save. 
especially since we are stacking as high DC as we can for our bombs and fog abilities. For your first level 4 spell, Ecolocation is my preferred pick here, because this will let any ally bypass any concealment the enemies might have, including if they don't come from Illusion, which is an area where the True Sin spell will not help you, Ecolocation however will. For level 11, I would personally go with Improved Critical and Bardish, as at this point you already have Death's Consonant. However, like I said before, when it comes to outflank, if you aren't going to be meleeing at all and just want to spam bombs, honestly just pick extra bombs from here onwards. As for another level 4 spell, Greater False Life. And yes, this does stack with the normal False Life too, and can contribute quite a lot to the hit points of your melee party members, including pets. For our level 12 bomb discovery, this is when I would actually pick Greater Mutagen, as I said before, even incense synthesizers can still retain access to this, despite not getting the normal Mutagen. As for your incense upgrade, at last we can finally pick Greater Sacred Incense, so now the enemies will be automatically sickened and then have to roll or become alchemically nauseated, which means they cannot perform any actions besides move. Your other level 4 spell can be anything, such as Death Ward, Freedom of Movement, or Great Invisibility. For a level 13 feat, I would pick Power Attack, just for more melee damage. As for your first level 5 Alchemist spell, this level is actually kinda disappointing. I would personally just go with Stone Skin Communal, the other spells aren't really that useful. For another discovery at 14, Cursed Bombs. Cursed Bombs is basically the second best debuffing bomb. It targets Will, and basically you get to choose a curse to apply to the enemy. The best one by far is Curse of Deterioration, because of how crippling the debuff is, a minus 4 penalty to both attack rolls and also saving throws. And remember, we can throw this multiple times per round, so even if the enemy has decently high will, chances are they're going to fail and we only have to hit them with this once because it is permanent. If you don't care for the Greater Mutagen, you can certainly pick Cursed Bombs earlier instead of it. I do find it best to leave it for this point where the enemies actually start getting stronger and require more debuffs. At level 15, I would pick Heightened Spell, so the reason for this is, at this point, we already have some pretty powerful Azata unique spells. One of them in particular, Believe in Yourself. Well, let's just say you want to have as many slots of that spell as possible to buff many allies, including yourself. This is why Heightened Spell, to give us more slots of certain powerful spells and more spellbook flexibility, and it even works for our alchemist buffs too. But like I said before, you can actually replace all of these feats past level 9 with just extra bombs. As for another incense upgrade, the final improved incense. So now we have plus 3 alchemical boost to attack and damage rolls. At level 16 for a discovery, pick Grand Mutagen for an even higher boost to any physical score you want, especially armor class. And then as far as your first level 6 alchemist spell, I would actually pick transformation here. So this spell lets any character in the game automatically get the same base attack bonus as a fighter, so equal to your class level. This of course is a massive power up to characters that have medium base attack bonus, such as pets. Well, and basically everything else like oracles, clerics, shamans, druids. Anything that's not a fighter, ranger or barbarian, basically. Plus, this also helps a lot with multi-class characters, as they tend to have lower base attack bonus, unless you're just multi-classing with high BAB classes. And by the way, you still retain both your incense fog and bomb uses while under the transformation buff. For our level 17 feat, I'd say you have two choices, either improve the initiative, as at this point you are at the end of chapter 4, so the enemies really start getting high initiative, especially the demon lord bosses, or just more extra bombs. Then for another level 6 spell, legendary proportions, but heal is pretty powerful too. For our level 18 discovery, feral mutagen. We do get this somewhat late, but you know, the bite attack is always nice, and later we can pick feral wings. For the final incense upgrade, this is up to you, but the best one to me here is unsettling fog. This way, your Incense Fog Aura will automatically reduce enemy saving throw by minus 2 against mind affecting effects. Which is perfect because at this point, your spellcasters can already cast Weird, the ultimate instant death illusion spell in the game, which is mind affecting. While it is true that you can stack this up to 3 times, we just don't have the space for it. I mean, if you had a complete party with many spellcasters that were focused on mind affecting spells, then I would certainly pick Unsettling Fog 3 times. 
As for your final level, 19 feet. I would just go with extra bombs now. I mean, you can pick combat reflexes, but at this point, you have a lot of other ways of enhancing the number of your attacks of opportunity, such as the Clemency of Shadow's Ring and the Ever Ready Mythic ability. So, level 20 is pretty important for an alchemist because we get our grand discovery. The best one here is Awakened Intellect for the stacking permanent boost to intelligence equal to plus 2. The reason I don't pick true mutagen is that as an Azata, we can actually apply our grand mutagen multiple times on our character. I'm not sure if that's an oversight, I suppose it might be, but you know it is something that can be done with Azata. Meanwhile, true mutagen can only be applied once. And the extra plus 2 to intelligence will help because no matter if it's true mutagen or the grand mutagen, we will take a minus 2 penalty to intelligence when under the effect. So they basically cancel themselves out. You also have two discoveries at once. The best one here would be Pharaoh Wing. And the other one is up to you. The remaining bomb effects aren't really that good. I suppose the best one overall would be Preserve Organs for a 20% chance to negate critical hits and sneak attacks, which is not that high. Or Enhance Potion and Extend Potion. Although I don't care much for the potion effects besides healing. You can craft potions as an alchemist character though. Also, alchemists can even turn other characters into dragons through the Dragon Kind 1 spell. It's not the ultimate dragon spell, but you know, it's the only way you'll get of making other characters into dragons besides a brown fur transmuter. Alright, now let's talk about mythic progression for our incense synthesizer Azata. When it comes to your first ascension, I would actually do it differently than the norm and pick close to the heavens, which is the angel ascension. The reason is well, this character does get both point blank and precise shot at level 1. Close to the heavens is kinda unique in that First, you gain a massive amount of uses per day, equal to 3 plus 1 per mythic rank, beyond the first. Even if you don't go angel, which we aren't going. Second, this can provide a pretty powerful range at healing ability, or you can also turn it into a nice damage rage to your enemies. So it is a double use ability. But if you don't care for this, there is always close to the abyss for the extra gore attack and more melee potential, or instrument of freedom to buff our allies, attacks with holy, although this has pretty short duration. Close to the heavens is pretty versatile, and I think for this build, which is all about being unique, it's kind of fun, and certainly useful. Now as far as your first mythic ability, like most spellcasters, the choices are given abundant casting, especially because for alchemists in particular, you do have a lot of powerful level 1 to level 3 buffs, and you want as many slots of them as possible. For Mythic Rank 2, I would go with Extra Mythic Ability and then Enduring Spells. Like I said, this build is all about buffing and debuffing. And because of how powerful our buffs can be, I do enjoy being able to get 24 hours duration for most of our powerful buffs, especially through Infusion. Also, at this point, your Alchemist won't have level 5 and 6 spells, so I don't see much of a point in picking Improved Abundant early. For Mythic Rank 3, I would just go for Greater Enduring Spells, so now we truly have 24 hours on everything besides the one run level buffs. For Mythic Rank 4, at this point you most likely are already level 11, so you have Improved Critical, which means you can get Mythic Improved Critical and Bardish. And now we also have our first Azata superpower. So the Azata superpowers aren't actually that powerful for this build in particular, who is more about buffing and debuffing. It's more about how great the Azata spells are. But anyways, they can still contribute a lot. Favorable magic and zippy magic are kinda useless for us, but overall I think the best pick here early on would be Incredible Might, because as I said this build can still contribute to melee somewhat. And even if you don't want to directly empower your character, this ability also has dual uses, because you can, instead, apply a minor version of the bonus to all of your party members. You can of course go with Life Bonding Friendship early, and I will certainly pick Shake It Off, as at this point, all your characters should already have outflanked by themselves through normal progression. The issue I have with Life Bonding is, well, I think if you really wanted your characters to keep on fighting beyond death, you should just get last stand because you can then heal them to normal spells. <laughs> but that's just me. For Mythic Level 5, you have two choices. You can go with Ever Ready to further empower your melee potential, especially at this point, you already have the best weapon with decent critical hits to truly get going on your attacks of opportunity, or improve the abundant casting for more casting of level 4, 5 and 6 alchemist spells. Since we already have greater enduring spells, I would rather pick Ever Ready earlier now. For Mythic rank 6, if you want more melee potential, Mythic power attack, the reason I don't bother with Mythic rapid shots is because, well, 
bombs hit the enemy's touch armor class, and we have so many boosts to attack bonus through our insensibility, the alchemist buffs, the azata buffs, the azata superpowers, that this minus 2 to bomb attack rolls won't really matter. I'd rather just go for mythic power attack. And then for the other superpower, marvelous endurance can grant a lot of regeneration, but I don't think it's that needed. All skilled on the other hand can be pretty fun when it comes to making skill checks, as our character has pretty high scores in most lore skills, plus proficiency with all types of weapons and armor can help. Once again, we can still go with life bonding friendship here. Mythic 7 is when I would pick Improved Abundant Casting, as at this point we already have all of the alchemy spells up to level 6, so why not? There are some pretty nice level 6 spells. As for Mythic rank 8, Mythic Improved Initiative. As for another superpower, you know the choice is up to you, either life bonding or marvelous endurance. At this rank, Marvelous Endurance can provide quite a regeneration effect, certainly more than 30 hit points per round, so why not? It's kinda of fun being a tanky alchemist. Your mythic level 9 ability can truly be anything. I'd go with last stand because at this point you are fighting the demon lords, and if you want to take on the first DLC inevitable access, there's a lot of powerful enemies there, especially on unfair, so it helps being able to avoid death so easily. But if you have a scald for pounds, you can also go with mythic charge. As for Mythic rank 10, when it comes to your last superpower, it's pretty much going to be what you didn't pick before. In my case, Life Bonding Friendship. Your Mythic feat and ability on the other hand can truly be anything, I mean at this point we already have the best ones by far. Even something like Flawless Attacks will work. Alright, now let's talk about gear selection for our Incense Synthesizer Azata. For the amulet, you know Valexa's Magnifying Amulet is always the best, especially for this character because... We want as high intelligence as possible to maximize our bomb and incense fog DC. But before that, the usual amulets of natural armor, although you can cast bark skin yourself, or some other amulets for higher initiative. Armor wise, later this character won't need armor because amusingly enough, we can achieve super high dexterity with no investment whatsoever. But early on, as an alchemist you can cast spells in light armor, so ideally, go with chain shirts, especially mithril chain shirts. For the robe and clothing slot, the robe of the seven sins can help this build, not as far as the DC, but more when it comes to the increase to caster level. After all, some of our powerful spells like transformation and haste are all rounds level based, and the higher our caster level, the higher the duration. For belts, early on, the ones that increase both strength and constitution, and later outright belts of physical perfection for very high physical scores. After all, we do have our Mutagen, which also increases all of these eventually. For the glove slots, I think a Reels Embroidered Gloves overall are the best for this build, for the nice luck bonus to armor class and saving throws. Although there are some other gloves you can use, mostly to support your other party members like Twisted Temptation, for higher saving throw debuffs, the same for Oppressor's Gloves. For the boots, as usual, Ronex Sacrifice are the best, especially as this isn't really a charging build, but you can go with the boots of Stampede. And with Ronex, you'll be able to achieve very high dexterity. For headbands, early on headbands that increase your intelligence. After that, headbands of intelligence and charisma, and ultimately headbands of mental perfection for all mental stats. The best one being darkness caress as usual. Our mutagen will reduce our mental stats by minus two, but we can make do. I mean, we still get more than 50 intelligence. For the cloak slot, the best as usual cloaks of resistance with the highest amount, and we can get very high saving throws as an Azata. We have some buffs to enhance that, such as moral support, and since we are good aligned, we also get to benefit from bestow grace. For the rings, as I said, since we have very high reflex, the ring of evasion is always a must. And besides that, for this build I like the ring of guiding star for higher initiative, but it's not really necessary. You can also go with the ring of imminent demise, or even rings of deflection that have higher than plus 5 some of which you can get at the latest DLC, for just an extra plus 1 to plus 2 to armor class. As for the braces slot, because of how high our dexterity can be and all of the buffs we have to armor class, I find the braces of armor here the best, especially the highest plus 8 version. But early game you won't need it, because you can just wear chain shirts as I said before. Alright, so now let's cover weapons and quick slots. For the weapon you know just like my Lich King build, the Death's Consonant is the best, since we are a very high intelligence build. But before that, any glaive or bardish, any rich weapon really. Since this isn't a heavy spellcaster build, we don't really need many metamagic rods. So the lucky dice is always a nice 
and Welcome Boost. The Signet of House was pretty little to empower any skill you have. This build does get Persuasion as a class skill after you pick the Azata all skilled ability and you can achieve a high persuasion score. I mean I only have 10 ranks here and still achieve 57 which could easily become 67 with 20 ranks. The Tankard of Free Spirit can be kind of fun because it does have a unique bonus as for Azatas. Lastly, I do enjoy Lesser Extend Meta Magic Rods, just to increase the duration of our round level buffs like Haste and later on Transformation to a normal Extend Rod. It does work for True Strike even, although you know True Strike is just for your first attack, but you can prep buff with this before battle starts. Well alright friends, so this was it for my Incense Synthesizer build. I do believe it's a very unique build with a class that's rarely covered in the game. If you found this guide useful then please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member to access some neat and exclusive content. Thank you for watching and see you next time!